Hello, welcome back to the low action. Today we're going to talk about power attenuators. What the hell are they and what do they do for you? And we're also going to get into my favorite attenuator, my Ted Weber Mini Mass. So, things are going to get loud. Hang out. As somebody who gigs a lot, and I gig a lot every weekend, stage sound is very important. And when I say it's stage sound, I don't mean the sound that's coming out of the PA system that the crowd dances to. No, I'm talking about the sound that's coming out of your amplifiers, out of your monitors, and what the band is hearing. If your stage sound is too loud, it's going to sound like crap. Um, the the uh, sound guy, if you're using one, is not going to be able to properly do his job. Your PA is going to be overworked. It, your overall gig, the sound is going to be terrible. And I see this a lot, time and time again, both in bands that I've been in and bands that I've gone to see. Uh, if you have more than one guitar player on stage, they tend to get into volume wars. Who can outplay the other? I can't hear myself because the lead guitar player is too loud. So he turns up his amp. Everybody turns up your amp. And that's a giant mistake to make. Uh, if you can't hear yourself, you need to tell the sound guy, I need more in my monitor. You set your amp at a decent stage level and you leave it. Don't touch it. That's the best advice I could give anybody playing a, a gig is set your amp to an acceptable level for the room that you're playing and leave it alone. Um, volume wars with your guitar player or whoever is just going to make your band sound like crap at your gigs. Set it and forget it. Um, and you don't want to... You don't want to be too loud. Basically, let the PA. If you're playing a gig where you where you hire a sound a sound guy who brings an adequate PA or whatever, like like we do, uh, let the PA do the work. That's what you're paying it to do. Let it do its job. Uh, set your sound levels. Like on stage, you should be able to have a conversation with your guitar player or bass player, or whoever. You should be able to have a conversation with them while you're playing. You should be able to talk to them, unless, I mean, obviously a lot of people are using like in-ear monitors now and things like that, so that's making it more difficult to, to communicate on stage. But you should be able to carry on a conversation or say something like, hey, do this, or hey, go to this part, or hey, check out that chick over there, and they should be able to hear you. If they can't, your stage volume is too loud. So how you can control that is with attenuation, and we're going to get into that right now. So what is an attenuator? Well, an attenuator is something that kind of, it's like a device, the best way to describe it, it's like a master volume for your speaker, not your amp. Um, it allow, it's a device that allows you to crank up your amp to 10 if you want. Uh, you can get the tube breakup sound, the, 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 those tones that you love, but you can set the attenuator where you can get that tone at bedroom practice amp levels. And this is great for stage sound because you can turn up your amp and get the, the gain that you like, the overdrive, um, the tones that you like, the tube breakup that you like without being too loud and being able to dial in a stage sound that works for your gig, the room that you're playing. Um, a lot of tube amps really are built for professional good grade uh, professional musicians who are playing like stadiums. Now, most of the people I know, 98% of them, are not playing those gigs. You're playing in clubs, you're playing in bars. You do not need a 50 watt freaking amp cranked up. I use a Fender Deluxe Reverb which is 22 watts, and that thing is loud. I'm usually in channel 2, which just knocks it down a couple of decibels, and I use an attenuator. Um, 
there's just you, especially if you have PA support, you do not need an amp that loud. Um, there are several different uh, companies that make attenuators. Some are better than others. Uh, Doctor Z is one. They make uh, the air brake, which is uh, meant to go. Uh, which some of them can even be mounted in the back of the amplifier. The one that I have here, Ted Weber, is handmade. Um, it, Weber, if you know the name, they, they make uh, premium-grade boutique speakers. They're really beautiful speakers. Uh, but anyways, they hand-make these every time you order them. They're, they're built to spec. Um, the mini mass that I have here is a 50-watt attenuator, which means it can work with amplifiers up to 50 watts. In my opinion, you should never need a tube amp over 50 watts unless you're playing Red Rocks. You just don't need it. It's too much power. Um, so it has a switch, uh, 4 ohm, 16 ohm, 8 ohms, uh, depending on what kind of speaker you're using with it. Um, it has an attenuate or it has a bypass switch because you'll notice on the back there's a headphone jack, and these things actually could be used... Uh, you can plug headphones in them. They can be used for practicing and, and silent recording. Um, you can crank your amp up and play through headphones and not blow your eardrums out. Um, and then it has a treble boost, uh, zero decibels, uh, three decibels, or six decibels, because when you do attenuate, you can get some fluctuations in your tone, and usually it cuts some high end. Um, if you look at the back of it here, you have uh, a headphone volume, you have a, a jack that says from amp, which means you come out of your amplifier with a speaker cable and into there. You have your headphones out uh, for silent recording or practice, and you have a line out if you want to go to a DAW or a PA or something like that, and then you have output to speaker. Now that will go out of here and into like a speaker cabinet or your internal speaker uh, in your combo amplifier. So what I'm going to do now, as I stated before, I have a Fender Deluxe Reverb which is 22 watts. And this amp uh, cranked up to 10 is insanely loud. It's crazy loud. Uh, I am going to plug the Weber attenuator and hook it up to the amp. And uh, I am going to put this amp on 10. You will see this amp on 10. I will turn the attenuator all the way up, the, the volume uh, knob on the attenuator all the way up, basically so that would mean it's not doing anything. Uh, and you're going to hear the amp on 10. I'm not going to mic the amplifier up. I'm going to use the same condenser mics that I'm using for my voice. Um, that way you'll get room sound. And you'll see when I'm talking that basically you're not going to be able to hear anything. It's probably going to distort the, the sound and, and sound crazy. But as I turn the attenuator down or up, oh, I'm not sure how that works. Anyways, as I turn the, the volume knob on the attenuator down, you'll see that it gets quieter. You'll be able to hear me talk uh, and it'll still sound like the amps on Ted, and I have a, I'll have a camera on the amp so you can see that I'm not adjusting the amp at all. The amp will stay on 10, but the volume adjustment you'll hear will be coming from the attenuator. Let's give it a listen. So what I have here is a Fender Deluxe Reverb, um, and uh, as we've shown, um, I have it on 10. Now, this amp is only 22 watts, but you know it is unbearably loud if it were to be cranked up to 10. So I have the uh, Weber attenuator uh, hooked up to it. I'm going to play this amp at 10. Uh, there is no microphones on the amp. I have a couple of condenser mics here for my, my voice on the video, and that's all I'm going to run. So basically what you're hearing in this video, I'm going to play the amp at 10. You'll hear it's probably going to sound distorted. It's going to oversaturate these microphones. And then I'm going to turn the power attenuator down. And as I do that, you should hear my voice normally. Um, and we should be able to talk. You'll hear the amp 
Uh, you'll hear that the sound levels come down to like a bedroom level type practice amp uh, levels, but uh, the amp you'll see in the in the other camera angle, the amp will still continue to be on ten. So here we go. Here's the amp, full bore cranked. <laughs> itself is still on 10. But the attenuator has it at a more acceptable level. And we can talk over my plane. That's how it works. So that's how attenuators work, and that's my mini mass. I freaking love this thing. I picked it up. Uh, I ordered it from the Weber website. I think it was $150. They have several different ones available. I'm a big fan of attenuators. They are awesome. If you have any questions, PM me. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, same thing on Facebook. Like, share, spread the word. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Again, these are meant to go in between the amplifier and the speaker, not on a pedal board. They will not work. Um, also very important when you're hooking up uh, an attenuator, you want to make sure your amplifier is completely off. You never want to have your amplifier turned on without a speaker load to accept what it's giving. You want to make sure it's off completely when you're hooking up or unhooking an attenuator.